Hi there, and welcome to the Managing Caseload in SSP video. During this short video, I'm going to give you an overview of the different features within SSP that assist an advisor in managing their caseload. On the screen, I've logged in as a coach. Uh, I've got two students in my caseload for demo purposes. Uh, most advisors would have dozens, if not hundreds but all of the features and functions that I'm gonna show you today will work the same way, no matter how many students you have in your caseload. We're gonna concentrate on the left side of the screen today, really in the My Caseload, My Watch, my watch List, and Search tabs. Uh, you can see just for the sake of overview, I've got a list of tools here. This is just a, the standard default SSP interface when you log in. As soon as a student is selected here, as you can see, I've selected, student is selected here. As you can see, I've selected Susan Thomas. Uh, the main tool is the default. Uh, here's the list of tools that I have access to in SSP. And then on the main tool, the dashboard is the default tab. And you can see the tabs that I uh, have access to within the main tool. We cover each of these tools in subsequent videos. So if you're interested in any one uh, tool or multiple tools, I recommend you uh, look those videos up and uh, I'll give you a detailed look at each one of those tools. So uh, my caseload tab on the left shows my caseload as an advisor. Uh, first off, I've got columns here. I've got first name, last name. I've got student type, student ID, the status, uh, whether it's active, inactive, and so forth. I've got alerts and risk. So in any of these, I could sort them. I can change it to uh, ascending or descending alphabetically. I also, with the dropdown, can choose uh, additional columns. So if I wanted to include middle name or date of birth or coach or email address, or I wanted to remove any of these columns, I could simply uh, do so by clicking that dropdown. And that dropdown is present on any of the um, different columns. So these are the columns that I've chosen. They're fairly standard. Uh, so obviously first name, last name, student type. This is a proprietary uh, list that you come up with to categorize students by type. You can see here that we've got two students who are first time in college. That would be a, uh, a standard or common um, student type, but there are many others, maybe student athlete, uh, maybe honor student, maybe distance learning student. Um, so uh, that column is really, uh, um, so uh, that column is really, uh, can be used however you see fit. Uh, we've got the student ID. The status again, uh, is customizable. I'll go through that in a little more detail shortly. Then I've got, uh, the alerts column. When that's displayed, it's going to give me the number of early alerts that are currently open for the student. Uh, you can see that Michael Anderson has two alerts open. Hence, you see the highlighted column uh, calling that out. And then for risk, you can see uh, a number, two numbers separated by a hyphen. That is high risk categories and medium risk categories. So I can see that Michael Anderson uh, has six, is labeled as high risk in six categories and medium risk in two categories. Susan Thomas, on the other hand, is high risk in zero categories and medium risk in one category. Okay. Uh, so just to complete the overview of the My Caseload tab, I've got an add sync, find a student and add them to SSP. I can do so uh, through any number of different fields. So any of the fields here in the left column that show synced on the left, I, if I have that information, I can enter it. So if I had student ID, username, first, middle, or last, home phone, school email, uh, I could find that student. Um, and then the student would load, and then I could easily, uh, by clicking a button, add that student to my caseload in SSP. I would simply select myself as the coach, assign a student type, and uh, add them. So it's really as simple as that. There are multiple ways to add students. Uh, I could also do so via the search tab, um, which I'll cover here shortly, but there's a number of ways to add students to uh, my caseload and that's just one of them. So if I select uh, a student here, 
So if I select uh, a student here, and I select edit student, now I see the same screen except for much of Susan's information is loaded. So you can see that I, since I've added her to SSP, I know her student ID, I know her username, I've got her first, middle, and last name, home phone. All of this information indicated by this synced uh, uh, notation here on the left comes from the student information system. So one quick note about information in SSP, because this is important to understand uh, really as you look at SSP as a whole, SSP gets most of its information from your student information system. The way we do that is during the implementation process, we determine the tools and the features in SSP that you're gonna use, that you've decided to use, and in the sense of creating scripts that pull that information out of your student information system into the SSP database. So we're really dealing with three separate systems if you think about it um, in the simplest way possible. You're dealing with the SSP application. In the middle, we're dealing with the SSP database. And then on your side, we're dealing with the student information system. The student information system is always the system of record. So the flow of information is always from the student information system to the SSP database. And that is with the uh, scripts that I mentioned just a couple seconds ago. So these scripts pull the information out that's necessary and put it into the SSP database. Then the SSP application calls the SSP database to get that information. And that's the information you're seeing here, as well as in most of the rest of SSP. There is some information, cover this in uh, detail, um, in the success indicators video that you may want to watch, also in the main tool video, there is some information that SSP generates on its own with coach input. Um, this also is good in the other tools video, is covered in the other tools video uh, via the intake tool, etc. cetera. Um, and that information though is never pushed back to the student information system. So the student information system is always the system of record. It updates the SSP database and then the SSP application calls the SSP database to retrieve that information. The SSP application never calls the student information system to get information. So I think that'll be, that makes a lot of sense probably to the IT or technical people watching this video. Um, maybe so, not so much with uh, the functional, st functional staff but uh, that is the way uh, that SSP handles information. So you can see the synced information here. I could change this information if I wanted to, uh, for instance, home phone number. However, as I mentioned, information never gets pushed back to the student information system. So it would change it only until likely tonight when that information is updated and then it'll be overwritten because the student information system is always a system of record. If I wanted to change their home phone number, their school email address, or any of these other synced categories, I would have to do so within the student information system, and then upon update, that information uh, would overwrite what's currently present. There are a few fields here that uh, I do have access to overwrite. Uh, alternate email, so if the student provides me with an email address, uh, maybe a personal or a secondary email address that isn't information system, I could add that here. An alternate or maybe mobile phone number, I could add that here. I could change the coach this way, so if uh, I wanted to reassign just this one student from me, uh, I'm demo coach six, and I wanted to reassign him to a different coach, I can simply select that coach uh, and when I click save, it would assign that uh, student over to that coach's caseload. I've got at the right uh, drop down for student type. Uh, this populates in the my caseload tab um, on that main screen. This is a uh, customizable list. Um, you determine the student types. It can also be updated from your student information system. So if you didn't want to assign student types manually and that information was included already in uh, your student information system, then um, this information could be popular. Then 
um, this information could be populated uh, in that manner. I've got some appointment dates and appointment start times, uh, anticipated start term. These are all um, for uh, just corner cases. If I was dealing with a student who was added to SSP but not yet attending, um, or if I used the send student in intake request, which I'll cover in the other tools video, um, I could set this um, appointment end times and start times. Elsewhere, you can see I'm looking at the student tab now. Elsewhere, I'll cover briefly the student groups or the service groups, I'm sorry, referral sources and service reasons. What these three are are simply metadata that I can attach to a student in order to categorize them, uh, make them easier to um, search for, make them um, easier to recognize in a mass of probably is um, just a simple categorization of a group that they're in. We provide out of the box uh, in SSP um, a common group uh, that may include student athlete, uh, honor student, transfer student, um, certificate student, um, and so forth. Really, the list is completely customizable um, to the groups that you currently use or would like to use on campus. You simply add those in configuration uh, of the application, and then you can assign those to specific students. These can also be assigned within your student information system. So if you're assigning these groups within your SIS, this information can then be pushed down and students would automatically be assigned. But for the sake of example, I've got a sample uh, a special service group here. I've got a sample uh, a special service group here. If I wanted to assign it to this student, I can simply select the arrow. If I wanted to assign a second one, I could assign that arrow too. If I wanted to remove one, I could simply select it, click the left arrow and move it back. And the groups um, that are assigned on the right would be assigned to the student. Referral sources work the same way. Referral sources would be um, really answering the question, who referred the student to go seek the advice of an advisor or coach? So this again is a customizable list. I can simply select one or more, click the right arrow, assign them to the student. Service reasons, again, the same thing. This would be reasons why the student um, is seeking advice from an advisor, why they're seeking to meet with an advisor. Uh, it could be an at-risk student, could be they need counseling support. Again, um, a commonly used list, but this list is completely customizable um, depending on um, the, the reasons or the groups that you're currently using now. So if I save this, it's gonna bring me back to the main window. I'll click OK. And you can see my service reasons, service groups, and referral sources always display over here at the right. I can click any one of these edit buttons for any of these and be directed back to the appropriate uh, configuration there under edit student. So back to the my caseload. Uh, I've got a list of um, or buttons where I can change student status. So I can change student status from active, uh, which would be the default. I can change them from something else to active. I can change, uh, I can change uh, them from active or something else to non-participating, to no-show, or to inactive. Um, in SSP, we never hard delete any student. So um, the way to remove a student from your caseload, for instance, if the student has graduated or transferred, received their certificate and moved on, is to transfer them to an inactive status. Um, you basically, as an institution, set the definitions that you want to use for each of these students, um, but there is no delete function within SSP, there's just uh, what we call a soft delete. Um, you can hide the student where they don't show up in lists, uh, but you can always go back and reload the student if you need to. They're always going to be available. 
Then I've got a drop down here that allows me to assign a number of bulk actions to a student. So either within my caseload, within my watch list, or within the search results, I can assign a number of bulk actions to multiple students. Either select students within each of those or all of them, however, whatever I select basically. So if I want to apply a bulk action, I would simply select the students that I'd like to apply the bulk action to, and then I would go to the drop down and select either export to CSV, which a CSV file would uh, be similar to a spreadsheet, and it would be, um, I'd be able to export that and then open it in a spreadsheet program such as Microsoft Excel or similar program. From there, I could obviously manipulate, sort, uh, or so on, the information that is exported. I could send an email, so I could select uh, a number of students who want to send a form letter type email. I could set their status either to active, to inactive, to non-participating or no-show, similar to the buttons here at the left. So I could change um, if I had a number of inactive students and I wanted to activate them, I simply find them and then set them to active status and they would show up in my caseload as active. I also have a watch and an unwatch here, and that uh, will transition me into the watch list. So when I click on the watch list, I see one student here that I've added to my watch list. The notion of a watch list um, is really a secondary coach or coaches. So in SSP, each student that is added to SSP must be assigned a coach. You're not able to add a student to SSP without assigned a coach. You're not able to add a student to SSP without assigning them a coach. The coach can either be assigned in the student information system and then that, if that data is recognized by the application or you assign students manually in SSP using either the add student or edge student buttons. I can assign a coach, as you saw with the drop down menu. So that is the assigned advisor, uh, the official, I like to call it, advisor within SSP. However, in real world, there are multiple people oftentimes who are advising or assisting a student who need access to certain tools and certain data in order to um, complete the advising process. So in this case, those people would add the student to their watch list. In order to add a student to the watch list, I could either use the bulk action here over. Uh, typically from a search result, I could select the students or I could search for them just with the um, search feature to find a single student and I could add them to my watch list simply by finding them, selecting them, and then clicking this link over here. Now in this case, I'm currently watching Susan, so it's going to give me the link that displays unwatch if I wanted to remove her from my watch list. However, if I was not watching Susan and Susan was in search results, I could simply select her and this would show watch student. I select this link and Susan would be added to my watch list. You can see that watch list um, looks exactly like my caseload. So I can see any number of students. As an advisor, I could watch other students who are, I am not their official coach, plus, plus other uh, people, other resources outside of the advising group could watch students. Uh, this could be faculty, this could be disability office, this could be um, really any other department or person who has access to SSP but is not the official uh, coach. As a secondary coach, I have access to all of the information in the student's record that my permissions have access to. So, um, for example, if my permissions do not allow me the access to the accommodation tool or to the map tool, for instance, I won't have access to view the students uh, accommodation or their academic plan in the map. 
but I'll have the opportunity to see any of the other tools that I've been given access to. I also will receive all of the notifications that the official coach received. So for example, when an early alert is opened, the official coach would receive an email as notification that an early alert was opened for a student in their caseload. If I'm watching that student, I would also receive that same email. So all of the notifications that go around in SSP for different functions, if I'm watching that student and a student is alerted in such a way, I would receive that notification as well as the official coach. So it's easy to watch and unwatch students and multiple people could watch the same student. So the student could have 15 different watchers and as an official advisor, I could watch other coaches' students if I needed to. So it's a very flexible students if I needed to. So it's a very flexible uh, feature within SSP. Next, I'm gonna to jump to the search tab. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the search tab. Um, SSP has a fairly robust search capability. So uh, we allow you to search um, as many um, different criteria as possible because we found that a lot of questions that come up about can SSP do that, uh, this or that, we found that search is typically the uh, quickest, easiest, most efficient way to identify certain um, subgroups of students, which seems to be uh, the questions that most uh, people have. How do I ident identify certain subgroups of people and then reach out to them? The way to do that is search and bulk actions. Search tab. So up at the top, uh, as an advisor, I can search my plans. So students who I've created an academic plan for, this would limit the search. Um, students in my watch list or students in my caseload. I could select any combination of these. If I don't select any of these, it's gonna search where I ask it to search in student exists in. So anywhere is the default. Anywhere really includes both the SSP application and external data. If I wanted to only search external data, I could do so by selecting the external data only criteria. If I wanted to search only SSP, which would exclude the external database, I would select that. So it's flexible on where I'm able to search. Keep in mind that I can search either the SSP application, which is a subset of the entire uh, which is a subset of the entire uh, globe of students, or I could search the SSP database, or I can search both. I can search by student ID. If I have their student ID, I can copy and paste it or type it in here, click search, and find that particular student. If I don't have their student ID, but maybe I have their first or their last name, or maybe both, um, I can search date of birth if I have that. Uh, those are all helpful if I just have partial information. I've gone over student exists in. If I wanted to start expanding my search, I can select program status. So are they active? Do I want to search only inactive students? Um, I can search just inactive and leave everything else blank, and it's going to give me a complete list of students who are in the inactive status. I can choose registered. This is very helpful because if I search for registered current term and not registered current term, I'm gonna get everybody. Um, so a little bit of logic has to be used, but I can multi-select by simply holding down either the command key if I'm on a Mac or the control key if I'm on a PC or Windows machine. Um, and that would allow me to multi-select. So if I wanna see students who are registered current term and registered next term, you can see that I can select both of those and I've got both, although my window's a little narrow to see, I've got both of those in my um, registered criteria. I've got a drop down for home campus. And by the way, any of these drop down menus that you see can be multi selected. So that is possible to do if I wanted to search um, 
I've got multiple campuses and I only wanted to search um, the campuses instead of distance learning, I could select these two watch to the exclusion of the distance learning students. Risk indicators, same way I could select multiple. Risk indicators uh, will cover a little bit in more detail in either the main tool or the success indicators video. So I recommend you watch for those. But this is a way to identify students uh, who are have one category that is either high risk or medium risk. Um, so a great way to um, pull up search results for specific students, maybe in at specific campuses, in specific special service groups, as you can see the drop down here, um, who are at high risk. Um, so as we go through this, I'm hoping that you're seeing how robust the search is to be able to identify different students um, with different risk categories. Um, special service group, I mentioned, that'll be a list. Um, special service group, I mentioned, that'll be a list of uh, the special service groups that we talked about already. I could multiple uh, select um, items in here. I've got start term. If I wanted to select students who are uh, slated to begin with a specific start term, I can do that multiple start terms as well if necessary declared major so again these this would be a customizable list that you would put together for majors at your institution but if i wanted to select one or more of these i could do so assigned coach so i've got a list of every coach here um, if i wanted to uh, search a certain coaches or multiple coaches caseloads um, or students assigned to them, I could do so with the assigned coach. Early alert status, result of um, if the students whose responses are current, student who, students whose responses are overdue, and all open early alerts. I've got financial aid SAP status that I can search on as well. I've got plan status. Uh, this is reviewed in detail in the map video, uh, but briefly there is uh, a calculation that SSP runs called map plan status calculation. And basically once a map is implemented and saved for a student and made active, uh, if the student deviates from that map or from that academic plan, they become off plan. So I can search for students who are on plan or off plan uh, based on this criteria and where the plan exists. I can search active plans, inactive plans, or students who don't have any plan, inactive plans, or students who don't have any plan created. Then down below, I've got a couple of range boxes that um, allow me to search for credits earned. And then SSP has three different GPA fields. Um, these are completely customizable and in addition, they don't need to be used. Um, if you just have one or two G GPAs, maybe an overall GPA, maybe a local GPA just for your particular institution, maybe a program GPA is within a major or a, a certain program. Um, if you use all these, great. SSP will display these, um, and you can obviously search for them. If you don't use these, then we can remove one or more of these um, and we can also relabel them if you call program GPA something different. So that's an overview of search. Um, I think you'll find that the search, just about any type of search, um, we do once in a while run into um, a crazy search that an institution may have. Um, and then when we run into that, we add that to the search field. If there is a search that you would be looking for, um, as a possible SSP implementer, and you don't see it here, uh, I'd love to see what it was. And uh, typically the level of effort to add searches to this search criteria is very low. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time, and it is a customization that we could add pretty quickly. So that concludes the managing caseload uh, overview in this video. I hope you'll look at some of the other SSP videos we have available 
And if you have any questions, as always, you're free to contact Unicon at any time.